of your favor your favor your favor your favor in the name of jesus thank you for the release of your favor oh yes lord in the name of jesus favor that would release oh god or activate divine help in the name of jesus divine lifting divine speed yes lord that give us divine access in the name of jesus thank you the activation of your favor, your favor, your favor. In the name of Jesus, your favor, your favor. Mando Shedabana. Let's 
for praying the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance an account in Daniel chapter 10 and God is always reassuring us hallelujah God is always reassuring us of his mercy towards us that he answers prayers he answers prayers I want to read this account very quickly in the name of Jesus this is what the Lord said or the angel of the Lord said to Daniel in Daniel chapter 10 and may I use this opportunity to ask that we share the room before we receive our devotion for today if you haven't shared the room those who have shared thank you if you haven't shared please let's do so in Jesus name invite someone invite someone. do something do something faith without works is dead hallelujah we want people in the room except you don't want people in the room but if you want people in the room, then your action to share, hallelujah, would be your application of your faith or your desire. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those who just responded. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. We can do better than that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us share, reflect on everyone that is in the room. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's do our bit. God would honor your effort. Honor your part. The Bible says we should not be weary in well-doing. No, it sounds so deep. Hallelujah. What, what is it about a share? Hallelujah. You are inviting somebody into this space that has been declared a Holy Ghost zone. In the name of Jesus, you're encouraging somebody to come into a space. Hallelujah. To give, give God the opportunity to do something. Hallelujah. For that individual. In the name of Jesus, so let's let's do something. Let's do something. If you haven't done anything, please do something. If you have done it, thank you. Daniel chapter ten. I want to read this very quickly. On the on April twenty third, the account gives. I was standing on the bank of the great Tigris uh, River. I looked up. I looked up. I looked up. Hold up, Michelle. May our heads not be cast down. The Bible says that the Lord is a lifter up of our heads. I looked up and I saw a man dressed in linen clothes with a belt of pure gold around his waist. His body looked like a precious gem. His face flashed like lightning. I hope you're reading alongside with me, by the way. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, Daniel chapter 10, verse 6 now. His face flashed like lightning. His eyes flamed like touches his arms and feet shone like polished bronze and his voice roared roared like a vast multitude of end of people only i daniel saw this vision may we not miss encounters in the name of jesus only daniel saw what was happening yes it's possible to be in a space and yet not see what god is doing it's possible to be in a space and yet not hear what God is saying. And it's an error. It's an error. My prayer is that we will not miss what God is saying. We will not miss what God is showing to us. In the name of Jesus. And it's not because we're better than anybody else, by the way. But if there's an encounter, we want to be a part of what God is saying. You know, sometimes when you're like, I didn't get it. When somebody says, hey, my God, that revelation, wow, just enlightened me. Just, I just got deliverance. And somebody said, I, 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 I just fell asleep when I heard the word. You know, I mean, I was even confused. Ah, they missed it. Just pray one prayer before I continue to read. Lord, whatever you are showing to us in this hour, open my eyes to see. Pray that prayer quickly. Pray. It's important. It was only Daniel that saw what God was about to show. It was only Daniel that saw the angel of the Lord. Lord, may I not miss. May I not miss. May we not miss, Lord, your encounters. May we not miss your visitation. Bible says many have entertained angels, but they did not know it. My God. They missed it. They thought that they were entertaining ordinary people yet they were divine encounters divine visitations what if you had known it was an angel 
What if you had known that you were dealing with the messenger of God? How would you have responded? What would you have done? What if this is the hour that your miracle is about to be released? A word, a word, a word in season. How would you sit up? How would you respond? What would you do? What would you do? Lord help us. Only 200 men out of the thousands and thousands that came to David. Only 200 men understood the times and the season and they knew what Israel ought to do. Only 200. If there is a minority, may we be part of the minority that would hear what God is saying, that would see what God is showing to us. Ask him for understanding. Ask him, don't boast in not understanding. Say, Lord, give me understanding. Open my eyes, open my eyes. Open my eyes, open my eyes. Open the eyes of understanding. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my mind. Wherever there is eyes, Bible talks about the beast of heaven that has eyes everywhere. Lord, wherever eyes need to exist for me to see, open. In the name of Jesus. Lord, open my eyes. A servant says, only I die. Saw this vision. The men with me saw nothing. Ah, I pray, O oh Lord, that we are not part of the category that will not see what you are saying. That will not understand what you are saying. May we not be part of those that, oh God, get so distracted that we cannot see. That we cannot hear. May we not be so weary that we cannot see, that we cannot hear. In the name of Jesus, help us, Lord. Help us, help us, help us, Holy Spirit. You see, but they were suddenly terrified and ran away to hide. So I was left there alone. To see this amazing vision, my strength was lifted. My face grew deadly pale. Because he was scared and I felt very weak. Then I heard the man speak. And when I heard the sound of his voice, I fainted. I lay there with my face to the ground thinking, oh my God. Because, you know, at those times, like when God shows up, it's like you're dead, you're a dead man. Ah, but we thank God that he was not a dead man. He was just... Hallelujah, having an encounter in the name of Jesus. It was an encounter that God did not allow him to miss in the name of Jesus. And I pray that that is, that would remain so for all of us here in the name of Jesus. He said, then I heard the man speak and when I heard the sound of his voice, I fainted and lay um, with my face to the ground. Then, just then a hand touched me and lifted me, still trembling to my hands and knees. The man said to me, Daniel, hear this, hear this. You are very precious to God. Jesus, you are very precious to God. And Father, we desire that what you say to one, you say to all. And I pray that, Lord, I'm speaking as an oracle, as your oracle right now, that everyone in this room, may you understand and know that you are very precious to God. You are very precious. there and just rest in that truth. Tell yourself, I am very precious to God. I am. I am. Lord, help me to even understand that statement. That I am precious to you. That you laid your life down for me on Calvary. 
Is there anything else that we want to see? What is it that demonstrates that I am precious to God? Is that He sent His only begotten Son? None of us will do it for anyone. I will not even do it for myself. And that's the truth. Look, I would look for a way out. I would look for an alternative. But Jesus laid his life down for you and I. You are very precious to God. Remind yourself. I don't know how somebody is feeling here this morning. Feeling weary, feeling tired, feeling like giving up. The Lord would have me remind you that you are very precious to him. You are very precious to him. And the angel went to tell him, so listen, Kim. What I have to say to you, stand up. Don't, don't, don't be weary and, and faint. Stand up. Stand up. I'm speaking to somebody in the spirit. Stand up in the spirit. Sit up in the spirit. Remain alert. not allow your head to be cast down in the name of Jesus for I have been sent to you when he said this to me I stood up even though I was trembling I stood up I stood up stand up in the spirit then he said don't be afraid Daniel since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. I have come in answer to your prayer. From the very first day that you lifted up your voice to heaven, your prayers had been answered. Your prayers had been heard in heaven. And I have come. He said, but for 21 days, the spirit of the prince of the kingdom of Pasha blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the angels, archangels came to help me. And I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Pasha. Now I am here to explain what will happen to your people in the future. For this vision concerns a time yet to come. felt weak, very weak. Verse 18 says, Then the one who looked like a man touched me again, and I felt my strength returning. Verse 19 again says, Don't be afraid, for you are very precious to God. Peace, be encouraged, be strong. Peace, be encouraged. Be strong. Peace. Be encouraged. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his mind. You are very precious to God. I pray that you're not just hearing my voice. But you're hearing what the spirit of the Lord is saying he's our biggest fan of him he's our biggest encourager the Holy Spirit then we will talk about cheerleaders he's our biggest encourager he will not encourage us in unrighteousness by the way he will not encourage us in anything that's outside of the will of God but anything in the will of God he would encourage us he would strengthen us. Oh, he would lead us in the paths of righteousness. And he's encouraging you and I this morning. On night time, whatever the times of you. And you are very precious to him. So as we hear his word, as we fellowship here today. As we leave this space, the time that we will finish, hold on to this truth. Hold on to this truth. I am very precious to God. I am. I 
choose to believe the report of the Lord. You know, I'm amazed at that, that event or that account. Because the angel saw the need to explain to Daniel. And we don't disappoint Daniel. There was an interruption in the spirit. And that's why there was a delay. There was an interruption in the spirit. But thank God for the backup or the help that was given. And so he said, I have come to answer your prayers. Lord, we thank you for this. Because we know that you don't release a word except it's needed in the house. Except somebody needs to hear this. Except somebody needs to be encouraged. Somebody needs to be strengthened. If you know that this word is for you, just type yes on the chat in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so that note, I want to welcome everyone who is here with us in Jesus' name. The ministers of God, you're welcome. In the name of Jesus, everyone, hallelujah, on stage, off stage, in the lounge, you're welcome in Jesus' name. You're just joining us, you are welcome. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Pray that we are ready to receive the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name, ministers of God, you're welcome. We love and appreciate you. You're joining us for the first time. You're most welcome. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, thank you for everyone who shared the room. In Jesus' name, I yield the mic. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I am very precious to God. Hallelujah. Greetings to you, woman of God. And thank you for that word of encouragement. And blessings to you, Apostle to Greater, Pastor Chris, Minister Daphne, Brother Jude, and all the other ministers in the room. God bless you all this morning. Amen. I have one of I just want to thank you once again. Thank you because you reminded us just how precious we are to you. Once again, we say thank you for your love. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for all that you do for each and every one of us. Once again this morning, speak to us. Lord, I'm your vessel. I empty myself, fill me up, and speak a word in season to every hearer in the room this morning. Father of God, let your word bring life. Let your word bring healing. Let your word bring deliverance to each and every one of us this morning once again. We say thank you because we receive it in faith. And thank you for the reminder that we are very precious to you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. We're carrying on our text this morning from the book of John, chapter 5. John chapter 5, and I would like us to turn to the TPT for those of us that have it. Passion translation, please, this morning. John chapter 5, TPT, and I could just get one reader, please, from verse 1 to 18. I appreciate that this morning. Thank you. I, I'm available. Thank you, woman of God. Shall I pray now? You should start reading now, yes, ma'am. Okay. John 5, the healing at Bethsaida. Verse 1, from Galilee, Jesus returned to Jerusalem to observe one of the Jewish, Jewish feasts. Inside the city near Sheep gate, there is a pool called in aromatic the house of loving kindness, sounded by surrounded by five covered porches. Hundreds of sick people were lying under the covered porches. The paralyzed, the blind, the crippled, and all these waiting for their healing. Verse four, for all, for an angel of God pre, per, peri, period, per, periodically, sorry, descended into the pool to stir the waters. And the first one 
who stepped into the pool after the water swirled would instantly be healed. Among many sick people lying there was a man who had been disabled for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that the man had been crippled for a long time. Jesus said to him, do you truly long to be well? Verse 7, the sick man answers, sir, there's no way I can get healed for I have no one to lower me into the water when the angel comes. As soon as I try to crawl to the edge of the pool, someone else jumps in ahead of me. Jesus said to him, stand up, pick up your sleeping mat and you will walk. Suddenly he stood up, he was healed. So he rolled up his mat and walked again. Now Jesus worked this miracle on the Sabbath, verse 10. When the Jewish leaders saw that the man walking along carrying his sleeping mat, they objected and said, what are you doing carrying this, carrying that? Don't you know that it's, it's the Sabbath? It's not lawful for you to carry things on the Sabbath? He answered them, then the man who healed me told me to pick up, pick it up and walk. Verse 12, what man? They asked him, who was this man who ordered you to carry something on the Sabbath? But the healed man couldn't give them an answer for he didn't yet know who it was since Jesus had already slipped away into the crowd. A short time later, Jesus found the man at the temple and said to him, look at you now, you're healed. Walk away from your sins so that nothing worse will happen to you. Verse 15, then the man went to the Jewish leaders to inform them, it was Jesus who healed me. From that day forward, the Jewish leaders began to persecute Jesus because of the things he did on the Sabbath. Jesus responds to the Jewish leaders. Verse 17, Jesus answered his critics by saying, every day my father is at work and I will be too. This frustrated them and made them all more eager to diverse, to de, diver, design, devise a plan to kill him. For not only did he break their Sabbath rules, but he also called God my father, which made him equal to God. Verse 19. Do I stop here? Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bless, him, bless the word of God. Thank you, Lord God. God bless you. Father, we thank you for your daughter. Thank you for using her as a mouthpiece once again this morning. Father, we commit her in your hands. Bless her. Father, enlarge her coast, enlarge her territory. Father, we thank you, God, for us, the readers of all that heard their word this morning. Father, bless each and every one of us and speak to all our hearts once again. So this morning we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The healing at the center. I love the way um, John carried this on for us because yesterday we knew that Jesus was at Galilee um, from verse 4 um, that Minister Daphne, uh, so Daphne dealt with. And so following on from that, it says, from Galilee, Jesus returned to Jerusalem to observe one of their Jewish feasts. And so we know that he had entered into Jerusalem at this point. And the Bible goes on to say that inside that city, so inside Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called, in Aramaic, called the House of Loving Kindness, and other translations call it the House of Mercy. And so it 
sets the scene for us, telling us that it was surrounded by five porches. And there were hundreds of sick people that were lying under the, the porches. And Apostle John lets us know that the paralyzed, the blind, and the people, all of them waiting for the healing. So I'm going to stop there and expand a little bit. As I meditated on the scripture and I, I was relating it to our our everyday life where we appear in, um, in meetings, church meetings, and whatever you want to call it, at a place of healing, I'll call it, because when we go to the house of the Lord, we go to worship God. We go to lay ourselves as um, living sacrifices before the Lord and stuff like that. And the Bible, as we're reading, says, this house of love and kindness, this house of mercy, had five porches around. But in those porches, there were hundreds and many sick people were there. And as I was meditating, I was just saying, Lord, how many times we go into your house with so many ailments, whatever it is, in expectance of what you're going to do. And those ailments for us oftentimes might not even be physical illnesses. So sometimes it can do with um, our needs, things that we're trusting the Lord for, things that we want God to do for us and stuff and all of that. And so the significance of the location, um, this said of me was obviously the house of mercy. It was known for its healing waters. It was known for its healing waters. So there was this pool there that was there. And the Bible goes on to say that for an angel of the God, Lord of God, periodically descended in the pool. So from time to time, an angel will come into the pool to stare at the waters. And the first one who steps into the pool after the water swell was instantly healed. And I said, Lord, when we go to the house of God, you know, we, we hear testimonies. Um, occasionally, I had this conversation with Pastor uh, Reverend Praise yesterday. And even though there's so many people that would have gone, let's just use church for uh, uh, illustration purposes, going to church on that Sunday, as Pastor Bruce just said, Daniel was the only one that heard, that saw the vision. Nobody else saw it. And this setting really shows what tends to happen sometimes. Only one person comes out, or maybe a couple of people come out and give testimony. And, and you're there saying, Lord, I'm trusting you too. You know, and oftentimes, yes, some of us are keen to the testimonies and say, God, you that have done this for my brother, you do this for me. The Bible says, among the many sick people, lying there was a man who had been disabled for 38 years. And I like the way that this, um, the TPT puts it, because all the illustration is it has been ill for 38 years. Um, had been crippled and all of that. And at 80 years, it's a very long time. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that the man had been crippled for a long time. Jesus said to him, do you truly long to be well? So this man had been ill for 38 years. And he was lying at the pool. But yet, Jesus asked him, do you truly want to be well? Which shows that the man had become comfortable with his condition. And the question I asked myself was, okay, why was he there? Was it just to see who was going to get healed next? Or was he enjoying the show? Or was it truly hoping that maybe one day, just maybe one day, I might make it into the pool on time. Because for 38 years, I was trying to 
look at different um, different um, narratives on the story because I, I I was trying to wonder because some people have said he leaked, he was there for 38 years some some passages have said that he was carried some different illustrations I was trying to say is it Lord that this man lived at this pool for all his life or um, people have been carrying him there because if, if if it's a case that he's been there for that 38 years that means he's been there all his life just looking at other people getting well if it's the case that this happened from time to time that he was carried means someone will carry him there and leave him there and then come back and get him so for him to say there was no one to put him in the pool made it questionable to me that okay if there was no one to put him in the pool then how was he getting there lord was it that he had been staying at this pool for 38 long years of his life okay and so Jesus asked him, do you truly want to be well? Because at this point, Jesus knew he had been there for a long time. However, are you, are you still anticipating that you would get well? Do you want to be well? Is it that you're okay with the condition at this point? Or are you here because you know that this is a house, truly a house of mercy, and this is truly a house of kindness and God can heal you. And so I stopped and I asked myself, okay, Lord, this is what a lot of us tend to do when the Lord is asking us a question. Do you want a job? Do you want whatever it is that usually our condition is? Because we have been praying for so long, seeking God for so long, it's almost like we get to a point where we're still asking God. Not that we don't know that God is capable of doing it, but we're comfortable to say, okay, Lord, if you answer me, fine. If you don't answer me, fine. Uh, but I'll just sit, keep coming to your house. Um, is it because I don't have a choice? Is it because I love you? Is it because maybe you remember me one day? Is it because, um, let me just come and see what the excitement is going to be today, you know, I always say our motives, why we are doing these things. When I read scriptures like this, I ask myself, Lord, what are you saying to me at this time? And so it goes on to say, the sick man answered, Sir, there's no way I can get healed. This is the TPT. For I have no one to lower me into the water when the angel comes. As soon as I tried to crawl to the edge of the pool, someone else jumps in ahead of me. Sir, there's no way I can get healed. And this shows the reason why Jesus asked this man, do you truly long to be well? The answer could have been a simple, yes, Lord, if you only know how long I've been here, I really want to be healed. He says, he says, sir, there's no way. I don't know why you're asking me the question. Yet I was asking myself, so what are you doing there? What were you doing there? If there is, if you know that there's no way, why are you still there? And so I was saying, Lord, when we say to somebody, somebody comes and say, do you want a job? Say, ah, oh, Pastor, if you know how many series I have sent, I have been sending series for the last 10, 10, 10 years. Nobody has called me. Do you want to, you know, so many scenarios I could use? Oh, I have been praying. I've been trusting God for the last, last, last 20 years and God hasn't come through for me. But that was not the question that the Lord was asking. But I thank God for indeed it was a house of mercy. It was indeed a house of mercy. And mercy had found this man at his time. And so my prayer for us this morning as we are reading this, this message is that Lord, may your mercy find me wherever I am, where I have lost confidence in that thing that I have been trusting you because I have now become comfortable with my situation 
The Bible goes on to say that Jesus said to him, Stand up, pick up your sleeping mat, and you will walk. Stand up, pick up your sleeping mat, and you will walk. I don't know what mat we are sleeping on this morning. I don't know what situation we have given up on. I don't know what hope we have given her up. But as we read the word of God and as the word of God comes to us, it brings life to each and every one of us. And the Lord is saying, pick up yourself this morning and move. I had a testimony yesterday morning, I believe, about a guy that had an immigration case challenge for 20 years. And they had closed the case. They had closed the case. They had told him the case had been closed. And because of a word that he heard on the on the prayer platform, he reapplied, knowing that his case had been closed. His faith was stirred up. And somebody that had been denied and had been told that his case had been closed 20 years in the USA, I believe he was, was now given the same thing that he had been denied of. Why? Because his heart was dead. And so the Bible said immediately he stood up. He was healed. So he rolled up his mat and walked again immediately. And for me, I was debating this yesterday when I was talking with Pastor Praise, but that was a sign of faith because even though he did not have faith that he was going to be healed, at the word of the Lord, immediately the Bible said he stood up. Something was stirred up within this man. His faith was stirred up. The same person that just said, I cannot, did not question when the Lord told him to, 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 to arise. The Bible says immediately he stood up, he was healed. So he took up his mat and he walked again. But I love the way that the controversy came in because John now said, now, Jesus worked this miracle on the Sabbath day. He, he knew it was important for us to tell us that because the following verses shows us why this was a very important information for us to have. Regardless of where you are, what day you find yourself, whether it's an evil day, a good day, whatever day, a Sabbath day, a holy day, or a holy day. Jesus is the Lord over all things. Jesus is Lord over all things. And so, when the Jewish leaders saw the man walking along, carrying his sleeping mat, they objected and said, what are you doing carrying that? Don't you know it's a Sabbath? It's not lawful for you to carry things on the Sabbath. This brings me back to the question. There is somebody that has been ill for 30, 80 years. And we know these communities were very small. Do you want to tell me they did not know who he was? Do you want to tell me they did not recognize this man? Yet, their concern was not about the man. They did not care about his health. They did not rejoice to say, oh, God has done it finally. No, it was what he was doing. And I'm going to go back a little bit. I also asked myself a question. The question was, when Jesus healed this man, where were the other people? They were looking at the poor. Didn't he have anybody next to him? Everybody was so focused on their own problems. 
everybody was so focused about themselves. Everybody was so focused on staring at the pool so that they don't miss it. That when the one that owns <laughs> the pool, I will be saying, I'm just going to use that for reference, owns the pool because we know God is master over everything. Walked in, they missed it again. They were all so focused on their own problems that Jesus came, performed such a major, major miracle, we would say, in the midst of all of them, and they missed it. And so I was just thinking to myself, this is what we do. Lord, give me a word. Put my put my put my matter in the mouth of your servant. Father, let your servant mention my case. And Jesus is saying, I'm right here, darling. I am right here. I am the master. That pool for me represented the servants of God. That pool for me represented men and women of God that we believe have so much anointing to heal us and not in the God himself that the miracle comes from. And so I was saying, Lord, I don't, you know, and when I read, I was laughing. Um, when I was reading the scripture, I would laugh. I would, you know, crack jokes. I would, you know, it, 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 because it's, it's when you picture the reality of what happened, it often makes me wonder that, like, Lord, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand how, 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 how were you missed in all of this? How were you missed? The man just picked up his bed and walked. He didn't even say, oh my God, come and see what the Lord has done. Oh my, can you imagine somebody like having a miracle that big and being silent about it? Just picked up his bed and walked. He didn't even care about anybody else. And that was the same thing that was happening in the poem. And so, and then we see how the Jewish leaders behaved. It shows how the mentality of Everybody there was just about what they believed in, what they, 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 their, 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 their philosophy, their, their, their traditions, um, their mindset. Because this was reflected in even the leaders. This is somebody that's just been healed. And instead, you are questioning him about a mat that he's carrying. And so he answered them, the man who healed me told me to, go, to pick up my, pick, pick it up and walk. And that's what I've just done. I've just done what I've been told. And so they asked him again, what man? They asked him, who was this man who ordered you to carry something on a Sabbath? The emphasis was not on the man's healing, but the fact that he was carrying a mat. Do you want to tell me that these people do not know who this man was? But the healed man couldn't give, give them an answer, for he, he didn't yet know who it was, since Jesus had already slipped away into the crowd. And then I asked myself another question, Lord, this man did not know you. Was he blinded not to see you? Did you did you not want to be known around? Did you not want to? I mean, but the disciples knew he was there. And this is a record from John. And I'm sure we've read it in other, in other, in other, in other, um, from the other apostles as well. The Bible says he did not know. He did not know who healed him. But yet. The man who told me, who healed me, told me to pick up my bed and work. And I was just, my thing with all of this is I'm saying, Lord, truly, as, and I, I thank God, um, um, Pastor Praise started with that. May we not miss you. May we truly not miss you. May we truly not miss you. A short time later, Jesus found the man, man at the temple and said to him, Look 
at you now. You are healed. Walk away from your sin that nothing worse will happen to you. Walk away from your sin so that nothing worse will happen to you. And Jesus felt it was very needed because oftentimes when Jesus would heal in the Bible, we will see him say, go and sin no more. When he delivered even the woman that wanted to be stoned, he said, go and sin no more. And this brings us all to a place of realization that the Lord, when he delivers us, it's for us to stay delivered. When he sets us free, it's for us to stay set free, I would say, to stay healed. Because what we don't realize is when the enemy would rage because he has come to steal, he has come to kill and to destroy. And so if he has come to steal and he has come to kill and he has put a disease or he has put something on you and it hasn't been taken off of you, he's not going to be happy. And so if he comes back and find out, this is why the Bible says, if he comes back and the house is empty, he will go and collect seven strong ones and come and enter. And so our, our consciousness of being sin-free, I would say, of not allowing ourselves to enter back into the enemy's trap was something that Jesus emphasized in all his healings. And so even though he'd not tell him it when he picked up his bed, he went back and made sure he said to him, ensure that you do not go back to sinning. Lest something worse than this comes upon you. And I cannot imagine what can be worse than being ill for 38 years. That means until he goes to, to his grave, he will, not, he will not recover that one. And so, while we have been delivered, and the Lord has set us free from things. May we not return to our vomit in the name of Jesus. May we not go back to test God or tempt, tempt him and, and, and say, oh, well, God is a merciful God. God, for, you know, at the end of the day, God understands. God, God, he said, ensure that you do not Go back to that thing. At that point, the Bible says, then the man went to the Jewish leaders to inform them it was Jesus who healed me. At that point, he now knew it was Jesus who healed him. And that he did not know when he was healed that it was Jesus that healed him. But when Jesus said to him, go and go and sin no more, walk away from your sin, I'll put it in the verse, walk away from your sin. Then he knew it was Jesus that healed him. Which means he knew Jesus. Because for me, I'm like, okay. All of a sudden, you realize who Jesus was. But we thank God for his mercy. And the Bible says, from that day forward, the Jewish leaders began to persecute Jesus because of the things he did on the Sabbath the things he did on the Sabbath. It wasn't because he healed this man. It wasn't just because he healed this man. The Bible says the things he did on the Sabbath. And so Jesus answered his critics by saying, so Jesus answered that every day my father is at work and I will be too. And this angered them and made them all the more eager to devise a plan to kill him. For not only did he break their Sabbath rules, but he also called God my father, 
which made him equal to God. And so, the Bible says, He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. And Jesus was saying, My dad doesn't sleep. The one that keep you people, he doesn't sleep, but he doesn't sleep. So, if he is busy taking care of his sheep, his people, all of you that he created, creation, then I have to do the same thing likewise. And as I was reading, I know we say Jesus, um, God rested on the seventh day. After he had finished creation, he sat down and he was looking at his work and he said it was very good. That rest, he, was, he didn't need to create anything else because he had done everything else. But yet, he didn't stop working because he's not physically creating. He was now enjoying the works of his hands. He was looking at the works of his hands. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't sleep. So his rest is not that like he goes to bed and sleep. And so, okay, I was having this debate the other day. I was oh, let me go to bed and lie down. I worked so hard. I need to go and rest. Because that's what we refer to as rest. He sits down and he says, look at my work. Look at the works of my hands. Look at my creation. And so Jesus said, every day my father is at work. He not keeping you people. He doesn't stop, but he doesn't sleep. And so this made them even more angry. And the Bible says, more eager to devise a plan to kill him. So they were plotting, saying, ah, we have to kill this man. We have to kill this man because he's coming here, he's messing up systems, he's messing up tradition, he's doing whatever he wants to do, he doesn't care about the law, he doesn't care about what, what our forefathers and ancestors have laid down, he's just because he was the Lord and they did not, he was amongst his people and his own recognized him not. Yet they were angry because he now called God my father. The Bible says, which made him equal to God. At the end of the day, at least we thank God that we have a, a, a father that has led us to his father. Because he says, when you pray, say, our father. And this is where they missed it. We called him my father. No, he's our father. If only you would accept him. If only you would understand the love that he has for us. If only you would take off the limits of your mind. He's my father and so he's also your father. He's our father. And so this morning, as we've heard the word once again, I don't know where we are, what stage we're at in our walk with the Lord, what it is we are looking to the Lord for. I want us to be reminded this morning that He is our Father and we are precious in His sight, each and every one of us. There is nothing to be created. There is nothing He cannot fix. There's nothing he cannot do. That man had been at that pool for 38 years. And the Lord singled him out and delivered him. Doesn't matter how long you feel the situation has been. The Lord is saying, rise up. Pick up your mat, your bed your problem, pick up whatever it is and walk, move. And I yield my mic, do it to you God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let's pray the Holy Ghost. Mando Kalevushana, 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 Mando Kalevushana,
Outstanding miracles of John. That John brought tonight. Outstanding miracles. Things all along standing look like this. Lord, that was it. But you showed up. Yes. Uh, thank you, Father. So we thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. You are not out of time. <laughs> oh, thank you that you are not out of season. Oh, thank you. Oh, the Father, thank you. Oh, Jesus, thank you. 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 Lord, we've received your word. We believe you. We believe you. And at the moment you would learn. Thank you. Thank you for this reassurance. It's not in night time. Thank you for this reassurance. Thank you. Thank you for this reassurance. Lord, we thank you for every request that has been lifted. And 
thank you for the word that has been released. There's nothing you cannot do. Nothing. Nothing. We thank you. We don't tell our problems. Lord, I'll tell you how big our problems are. We tell our problems how big our God is. Yes, Jesus. You make mountains look like little things. And you can speak to this mountain. And you also said all we need. We have it already. Faith as small as a mustard seed. So Father, we thank you. Because you are faithful at your word. Thank you for your divine intervention over every life that is here, that has heard your word today. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for healings. Thank you. For restorations. Thank you. For good news. Thank you for lifting. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Also pray, Lord, that you replenish your daughter and heal her. In the name of Jesus, there's nothing you cannot do. Thank you, Lord, that she's also a recipient of his word right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come, we not hear these words and remain the same. May we, not, may we not just hear these words of God and not have testimonies. We ask for evidence of your word, evidence of your truth in our lives. You say greater things will be done. We receive greater. We receive greater. We receive greater. Greater testimonies. Greater encounters. Greater miracles. Wait, 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 I know the testimonies that we receive cause others around us to be there. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your mighty power. Thank you for your mighty visitation. Thank you for your mighty intervention. Thank you for your mighty provision. Thank you for your mighty solution. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the weight of your glory. May you continue to manifest all of us, all of us, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you.
Hallelujah. 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 The Lord indeed is mighty and we say thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Pastor. Praise God. Lord, thank you for the word that has been released. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Well, if you missed the session today, we we'll encourage you to come back in and listen to the replay. In Jesus' name. Amen. And, and I want to appreciate all the ministers of God in the room. Hallelujah. Everyone here with us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for your presence right here. And if you're just joining us, thank you for joining us. And um, we pray that what has been released, you'll be a particular of it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I yield the mic for announcement. Praise God. Good morning, Pastor Chris. Good morning. It's a good morning. Good morning, ministers in the house, ladies and gentlemen. A very good morning or even to you all, depending on where you are. Sure. This is morning prayers in the spirit hosted here on the co house of Pastor Praise. The vision for our daily prayer room is to help Christians build capacity in their prayer lives, make and empower disciples of all nations to advance the kingdom of God, connect people who are not part of other ministries to establish kingdom community. So let's use this avenue to draw a remnant to a fatty church. As like minded believers connect, a factor can grow in membership, fellowship, and kingdom advancement. For those just join us for the first time, a very warm welcome to you. We hope that you have been blessed by today's session as you start today or end it with prayers. We are here every day of the week from Sundays to Saturdays at 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. BST 